Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie, aka Diamond Steph, and I thought we'd do a paint with me and true crime story tonight. Uh, but first, I wanted to let you all know that um, I'm sorry about the lack of videos the last couple of days. I've been working on my Etsy store. I'm making cover monders. So as soon as I get my store stocked up, I will put it, the link out in my descriptions and put it on my Facebook page. So you can find it if you're interested. And another thing is I'm also an affiliate for Diamond Art Club. And if uh, you're interested in buying through my page, all you have to do is click on my link. And it'll take you straight in and I'll make like a small commission off of that if you order through my link. But it's no big deal if you choose not to. Either way. But if you are a new customer, I do have a code uh, for your first time order. You can use STEF74 and you'll get 15% off of your uh, first order. So that helps out a lot. Alright you guys, I hope you all have had a wonderful day. It was a beautiful day here today and I just thought I'd jump on here and do a true crime story and just relax for a little bit. Do a little bit of diamond painting. So grab whatever it is you're working on, whether it be diamond painting, cross stitch, whatever it is that relaxes you, grab it and let's take a moment for ourselves out of this day. And I've decided to do the true crime story today of Mary Beth Tinning. I had never heard of it, and I seen another YouTuber that I love to watch do her story, and I thought it was really interesting, so I thought I'd try to share it with you guys. Okay, uh, and I am working on this big <laughs> country in and farm diamond painting. It is huge. It is a 98 by 70, and I've worked and worked on it at the night time, and it looks like I've barely made a dent in it, but I'm going to work some on it now while we do this. <laughs> So, um, let's read what Wikipedia here says about him in this article. It says, uh, Mary Rowe Tenning, born September 11th, 1942, is an American serial killer. In 1987, Tenning was arrested and convicted for the murder of her ninth child, four-month-old daughter, Tammy Lynn. On December 20th, 1985, laboratory testing indicated her, de her death resulted from asphyxia by suffocation. Oh, that's horrible. Four months old. Mary Beth is suspected to be involved in the previous deaths of her eight children. My goodness. I mean, why would you have that many kids and then turn around and kill them? I don't know what goes through people's minds. Y'all, but I, mine's grown, and I'm super protective over them, so I cannot imagine doing something to harm one of my children or grandchildren. I don't know how a person could live with themselves. Okay, it says, um, nine tinny children died under Mary Beth's care over 14 years. Cause of deaths for her first eight children were initially thought to be genetic. Okay, so I guess they thought they was born with whatever it was that killed them i mean i just i don't see people getting by with killing eight of their children how could you not at some point question that and just think it would be genetic i do understand genetics plays you know a lot of parts and things like that but eight of them eight of them i mean you would think that would <laughs> raise some eyebrows wouldn't you okay let's see lost my place here okay it says um after investigating the other children's death the schenectady county prosecutors only had enough evidence to charge tinning and one child's death in july of 1987 she was convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 20 years to life and appealed her case to the new york supreme court argued tinning's confession to the crime was coerced and there was insufficient evidence to convict her but this appeal was denied. Tenning's dino diagnosis of Munchausen syndrome, syndrome, I cannot talk today, Munchausen syndrome by proxy has come into question. It is unclear she has ever been diagnosed with MSBP. Analyzing her reoccurring events, some believe Tenning's pattern of behavior aligns perfectly with the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Development and course section on the disorder and individuals with recurrent episodes and falsification of signs and symptoms of illness and or induction of injury. The pattern of successive deceptive contact with medical personnel, including hospitalizations, may become lifelong. So at this point, 
they were saying that she has the Munchausen syndrome, which is, I think, where you always find a way to make sure your child is sick when you're the one making them sick. I don't know a lot about it, but I've heard of cases of it, and it's very disturbing. Um, it's where, you know, person, people, a person or people get attention through making their children sick, you know, and they get the, oh, you know, we're so sorry for you. They get a lot of attention, and I guess that's something that they crave. I don't know to which extent you would go to get attention by killing your children. That is just, that's horrible. To me, that's just unimaginable and uncautionable. I don't know how anybody could live with themselves, even being mentally sick. I mean... I don't know. This stuff just blows my mind. Okay, it says, uh, let's see where it's at. Okay, one second, guys. I'm trying to read on here and make sure they got the rest of the story on here before I go all through it. Okay. Uh, okay. It says, Tenning was incarcerated at. Tenonic Correctional Facility for Women in Bedford Hills, New York. She was denied parole six times, but was granted parole at her seventh hearing in July 2018 and was released in August of 21, 2018. It says Mary Beth Rowe was born to Ruth and Alton Lewis Rowe on September 11, 1942 in the small town of New York. There is little information available regarding her formative years during some of this time. Her father was deployed overseas fighting in World War II while her mother was working. Because both parents were away so much, she was occasionally shuffled among relatives. One elderly relative brazenly told her that she was unwanted and an accidental child. When her brother reached adolescence, Mary Beth told him, You were the only one they wanted, not me. Well, I guess that could cause some trauma to you to be a little bit unstable and stuff, but... To make you crazy enough to kill your kids. That's a whole different story for me. Like I could see where that would hurt her. And it would bother her. And maybe feel you know really bad about herself. Or thinking nobody wanted her as a child. I mean of course that would be damaging to anybody. But we all go through stuff as children. And you grow and you learn from it. You don't go around just doing what you want to do. Having kids and taking them out of this life. I mean, if that's the case, you know, the world would be total chaos all the time. All right. It says, on completion of his active duty, Alton Lewis Rowe worked as a press operator in a nearby General Electric facility, which was the area's largest employer at the time. As an adult, Mary Beth once claimed that her father abused her when she was a child. During a police interview in 1986, she, was she told one investigator that her father had beaten her and locked her in a closet. During court testimony, she denied that her father had bad intentions. My father hit me with a fly swatter, she told the court, because he had arthritis and his hands were not much use. And when he locked me in my room, I guess he thought I deserved it. Mary Beth was an average student at Donsburg High School, from which she graduated in 1961. Following high school, she worked at various low-paying, unskilled jobs. She eventually settled on a job as a nursing assistant at Ellis Hospital in Schenectady, New York, 10 miles north of Dwaynesburg. In 1963, Mary Beth met Joseph Tenney on a blind date with some friends. Joseph was quietly happy-go-lucky. They married in 1965 and, their and had their first child. Barbara was born in May in 1967, followed in July of 1970 by Joseph Jr. In October 1971, Mary Beth's father died of a sudden heart attack. In 1974, the elder Joseph Tenning was admitted to the hospital with a near-fatal dosage of barbiturate poisoning. Later, he and Mary Beth acknowledged that when he that when this incident occurred, their marriage was under heavy turmoil. This led to her pl placing pills, where, which she took from a friend with an epileptic, epileptic daughter, into Joseph's grape juice. Joseph declined to press charges against his wife. So, yeah, she's already trying to take him out there. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, I when I read some of these, man, it makes my mind twirl. I don't know. Some of them is really far out there. Uh, on December 26, 1971, 
Jennifer, the teenage third child, was born at St. Clair's Hospital. Jennifer had hemorrhagic meningitis and multiple brain abscesses that had developed in utero. Jennifer lived for only a week and never left the hospital. She died on January 3rd, 1972. Aww. Two weeks after Jennifer's death, Tenning took two-year-old Joseph Jr. to the Ellis Hospital emergency room in Schenectady, claiming that he had experienced a seizure and choked on his own vomit. Joseph Jr. stayed in the hospital for several days under observation before being released when the doctors found nothing wrong with him. On Jan on January the 20th, a few hours after his release, Mary Beth brought Joseph Jr. back to Ellis Hospital emergency room. The boy was dead on arrival and his death was attributed to cardiopulmonary arrest. Several weeks later, after the first, Mary Beth rushed Barbara to Ellis Hospital because she had gone into convulsions. That sounds like the same thing. The next day, Barbara died after being in a comatose state for several hours. Her death was attributed to, to Rye syndrome. Mary Beth Tenney was 29 at this time. So, wow. 29 and already lost two children. I mean, that's... I mean, when I read these stories, I kind of try to get inside their brain and think. And I just... I couldn't imagine losing one child, let alone two, let alone eight, like she has. I mean, I, I just can't... I can't fathom that thought. And, I mean, I've heard some horror stories during all these. But this one right here, I've never heard of a woman ever having eight children and killing them. That blows my mind. It truly is. Okay. On Thanksgiving Day, 1973, Tenning gave birth to son Timothy on December 10th. Timothy was brought back to the same hospital dead. Timmy told doctors she found him lifeless in his crib. Doctors attributed his death to sudden infant death syndrome, which is SIDS, in March 1975. Tenning's fifth child, Nathan, was born that autumn, and he died in the car while out with Tenning. I mean, how did they not see? I don't understand how, how they could just continue to let her kill these kids. I mean, after you brought in one and then another dying one right after another, wouldn't you start to question this woman? Wouldn't you start to question, hey... Something's going on with this woman. All of her children are dying. This doesn't look right. We need to check into this. But no, it seems like they go on. They let eight kids die. I just don't understand. Was they just too lazy to look into it? Did they not care? Or they truly believe something was going on, you know, in the genetics of them. Which, I just can't see that in eight children. That is just crazy to me. Uh, let's see. Where was we at? Okay, in August 1978, the Tennings adopted newborn Michael. Okay, so they adopted this child. So that's what I want to know. How could it be genetic? He is not a blood relation. Let's see. In August 1978, the Tennings adopted newborn Michael on August the 29th. Excuse me, October 29th. Mary Beth gave birth to him, to her. Sorry, Mary Beth gave birth to her sixth child, Mary Frances in January 1979. Tenning rushed to Mary Frances to the emergency room directly across the street from her apartment, saying the baby was having a seizure. The staff was able to revive her, reporting aborted SIDS. A month later, a month later, Tenning returned to the hospital with Mary Frances in a full cardiac arrest. She was revived. Oh, I can't talk today, man. She was revived but had irreversible brain damage. She died two days later after being taken off life support. The Tenning's eighth child, Jonathan, was born that fall. He died in March of 1980 and after being kept on life support in Albany, New York for four weeks. In February of 1981, Michael fell down the stairs and suffered a concussion. On March 2nd, Tenning took him to the doctor because he wouldn't wake up. Michael was already dead when Tenning brought him into the doctor's office. Since he was adopted, the long-suspected theory that the deaths in the Tenning family had a genetic origin were discarded. Well, it's about time. Tammy Lynn was born on August the 22nd, 1985. On December 20th, she died from being smothered. That day, the Tennings were visited by Betsy Mannix of Schenectady County's Department of Social Services. Now, after all these kids die, 
All of them. They're finally being visited by the Department of Social Services. Wow. Uh, it says Bob Enfield of the Schenectady Police Department was asking about Tammy Lynn's death. The causes of the children's death were listed diversely between natural, undetermined, or of sudden infant death syndrome. Six autopsies were executed after the Tammy Lynn's death, but they did not show any signs of abuse. There were suspicions and commonly there were suspicions and community whispers of foul play. Prior to Tammy Lynn's passing, there was no suspicion found in the sequences of their deaths. There were so many of us in on it, I guess, said Dr. Robert L. Sullivan, Schenectady County's chief medical examiner. If anyone is negligent, I suppose I I suppose I am probably I probably should have asked. There must be more to it than this, but we all think and don't do. Well, at least he's taking some responsibility for it, but it's too late after all these children have been killed. <clears throat> Mary Beth and Joe Tenning were separately taken to the Schenectady Police Department for questioning about Tammy Lynn's death. During the police interrogation, Mary Beth signed a document confessing that she had murdered Tammy Lynn, Timothy, and Nathan. She was arrested and charged with Tammy Lynn's murder. Police officials initially suspected that Tammy Lynn died of SIDS. Dr. Michael Baden, the lead forensic pathologist and member of the State Police Special forensic unit determined Tammy Lynn's death resulted from smothering. After charging Mary Beth with Tammy Lynn's death, officials said that they considered the deaths of the eight other tending children to be suspicious. Invis investigators later said that Jennifer's death was not suspect, but it occurred before the baby left the hospital. Mary Beth Tenning made her $100,000 bail payment and was released from custody until her trial date. She should have never had a bond set. In my opinion, she should have just remained in jail until her trial. The murder trial tending began in, began in Schenectady County Court on June 22nd, 1987. And Dr. Bradley, Dr. Bradley Ford, Tammy Lynn's pediatrician, testified on behalf of the prosecution saying Tenning had dismissed his suggestion that due to her siblings, death, she should install a specialized alarm device enabling and monitoring of the baby's breathing and heart rate. Two additional prosecution witnesses, Dr. Valdez of Miami, Florida, presented the SIDS uh, Foundation, and Dr. Thomas Oran, the medical examiner who performed the baby's autopsy, said the diagnosis that Tammy Lynn was smothered to death was a soft ob was smothered to death with a soft object. After the six-week trial, the jury deliberated for 23 hours across three days, leading to the conviction of Tenning, 44 on one count of second-degree murder. During their deliberation, jurors called a readback of the portions of Joseph Tenning's testimony, recounting his wife's alleged confession to state police. In his testimony, Joseph said that he had a five-minute conversation with Mary Beth Tenning after the police questioning, and she told him, "I killed Tammy." She was acquitted by the set. She was acquitted by the seven-man, five-woman jury for the count of verdict. Was it? Let's see. She was acquitted for the uh, seven-man, five-woman jury for the count of deliberately causing the infant's death, but was convicted of murder by depraved indifference to human life count. Tenning placed her hands over her eyes and sobbed quietly as the verdict was announced. Later, Joseph said, I still think she's innocent. <laughs> I don't know how they could think how he could think that over. I mean, that's his children too. How could you think she was innocent? Judge Clifford Hargan immediately vacated Tenning's a thousand dollar bond and mandated she be held in Schenectady County Jail pending her sentencing trial. After her trial, she received a sentence of 20 years to life, five years shorter than maximum penalty for this crime. She was imprisoned at the Bedford Hills Community Correctional Facility for Women. After her conviction, she appealed on the grounds that her confession was not voluntarily given and that her conviction was not supported by, was not supported by sufficient evidence and and in 1988, her appeal was denied by the New York State Supreme Court Division. Um, it goes on to say, Tenning's first attempt for parole was in March 2007 
at the parole board meeting, Tenny said, I have to be honest, and the only thing that I can tell you is that I know that my daughter is dead. I live with it every day. I have no recollection, and I can't believe that I harmed her. I can't say any more than that. Her parole was denied. In late January 2009, Tenning went before the parole board for the second time. Tenning stated, I was going through bad times when she killed her daughter. The parole board again denied her parole, stating that her remorse was superficial at best. Tenning was eligible for parole again in January 2011. At the 2011 parole board hearing, Tenning said, after the death of my children, I just lost it. Tenning told the board on January 26, I became a damaged, worthless piece of person, and when my daughter was young and my state of mind at the time, I just believed that she was going to die also, I, so I just did it. Well, she was denied parole again due to her lack of remorse. Tenning was supported by people from Georgetown University Law Center and people she worked with in prison, describing her as the most loving, most generous, caring person they had ever met. When questioned about the murder during the 2013 appearance, she said, it's just, I can't remember. I mean, I know I did it, but I can't tell you why. There is no reason. The parole board stated this was an innocent, vulnerable victim who was entrusted in your care as you was her mother, and you viciously violated that trust, causing the senseless loss of young life. The parole board then said discretionary release would discretionary release would so depreciate the severity of the crime to undermine respect for the law, as you placed your own interest above those of your society's youth. Um, it says the parole board, February eighteenth. Uh, let's see. Oh, the February 2015 parole board again denied Tenning's release, finding that she continued to, de to demonstrate no understanding nor any remorse for taking her child's life. Tenning was denied parole for the sixth time in January 2017. The parole board ordered her to return in 18 months rather than the previous standard of 24 months. Tenning, 76, was released on parole August 21st of 2018. She served more than 31 years of her 20 years to life sentence before being granted parole. Tenning's husband, Joseph, who supported her throughout her incarceration, was there for her release as part of her release. Tenning will remain under parole super supervision for the rest of her life. A Department of Corrections spokesperson stated Tenning lives in Schenectady County in upstate New York, and she has a curfew and must attend domestic violence counseling. And that's all it has on that subject, on the on her subject on Wikipedia. But what do you guys think? I mean, she was 76 years old when she got out. Do you guys think she should have got out? Do you think she should have spent the rest of her life in jail? Me personally, like, I get it. She's 76 years old, but I don't think that she should have a chance at any kind of life because she took her children's life. They never had a chance at life. So just because she's older, I don't understand why she should get one. Like, yeah, she's on parole. But she's still going to have some sort of a life, and those babies have none. And that infuriates me. I don't think she should ever, I don't I don't think she should have ever come up for parole, period. But anyhow, guys, let me know, you know, if you like this video, if you do, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you've ever heard about this story before and what you think about, you know, them giving her parole at the age of 76. Do you think that was fair? Do you think she should have spent the rest of her life in prison? Either way, guys, I really appreciate y'all coming and spending your time with me and subscribing to my channel. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so if you enjoy my videos. But until next time, guys, bye-bye.